In this video, I'm gonna show you how I made my bootleg of the hit song Senorita by Shawn Mendes and Camila Cabello. Coming up. Hello everyone, this is DJ Amit and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, let me introduce myself. I'm a DJ and an award-winning remixer for Bollywood. I've remixed over 60 movies and won an award for one of them. I've also officially remixed a song for A.R. Rahman in his album Connection back in 2010. So recently a DJ messaged me saying he really loves my work and he would like me to make a bootleg of the song Senorita. And I've done so and the response has been just amazing. So I thought why not just make a video showing you guys how I made the track so all you new DJs who want to get into music production can get an idea of how to actually go ahead and make a track on your own. So here we are inside of Ableton. This is my session of the song. Before we begin, let me make two things clear. One, I'm not going to be playing the original song because of the copyright issue. Number two, this video I'm going to make in two parts. One, I'm going to show you how I made the drums, the FX and the bass. And the next video, which I'm going to be putting out next week, I'm going to be showing you how I made the entire synth section and the rest of the things. I'm also going to be adding timestamps in the description of the video so you guys can just select which part of the video you want to see all right so let's begin So that's what the track is all about. This is how it sounds. So let me just uh, solo the kick and the kick sounds like this. Let me just loop it. There are two kicks playing actually more than two. Uh, the pattern is very simple, four on the floor. And if you go inside the track, there are three kicks actually. One is the body and two, uh, the clicks, the high ends, like that part. So if I just mute the clicks, you'll just hear the body of the kick. And now if I add the clicks on top, let me mute the body of the kick. This is without the low ends of the kick. So the body is actually Max for Life device, which actually comes in the Ableton suite. And I'm using these settings. You can actually pause the video and actually copy the settings. Okay, so for the clicks, I have two layers. Both are, I think, samplers. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So there are two samples in layer one and same with layer two. So actually, there are four clicks going together. So let me just solo them and play. This is layer two of click two. This is another one. So together, they sound like this. This is the kick one. And there's another kick below it. Both the kicks sound like this together. For the second kick, what am I doing? I've just pushed a little low and down and I'm boosting a little bit of low mids. Okay, together. Okay, that's all, that's all I'm doing. I just didn't want this low end section of this particular kick to interfere with the earlier one. That's it. Okay, so I have three bass tracks and they are all grouped into this one group. And the first one, let's hear it with the kick. So 
So for this base, what I'm doing is I'm using a preset of operator called Tom and Bass. And with the help of EQ8, I've just really cut off a lot of highs and high mids and kept the low mids only. Now, if I remove this EQ, just check out how the bass sounds. With the EQ. See, a huge difference. And I've layered this Tom Bass with another FM base so now I'm not using any presets in this one I am just using an operator just a simple settings if you guys want you can actually pause the video and actually see what I've done here after that I have an EQ8 where I'm trying to cut off a lot of low ends and that is because I have enough low ends over here because of this section I'm cutting off the low ends in this section okay now let's see both of them together now let me remove the FM base let me mute the tom bass. It's, it's like a perk playing and it gives that high end to that tom bass. And I've added these bass tracks into a group track and I'm not processing them. After that, I have another bass track, which actually is not layered. It's just one single bass sound and I'm using an operator device for it. This is how the only the bass sounds. This is the pattern that I've made. This is the clip and now let me show you the pattern of the earlier tom bass. And all together with the kick they sound like this. I bloody love it. Uh, moving on to the third bass. Now the third bass only comes during the breaks, when the song breaks down and it sounds like this, very simple. And the clip song is like this. And for this I'm using this amazing bass plugin by Loop Masters which is available on uh, plugin boutique it's a very cheap plugin it's, and it sounds kick ass it's called bass master one of my go-to plugins want to check it out just check out the demo now let's hear the same portion with the kick and all the basses mm, nice and groovy Okay, so all these three bass tracks, this one and the other two which are on top, which are inside the group tracks, go into this one mega group track called All Basses. And here again, I'm trying to process them together a little more. And so I'm just trying to control the low ends in this group track, followed by one rack that I've made, a sidechain rack. Actually, I have a lot. In fact, I think I have seven of them. You all will be able to know what actually is happening with the sidechain. If I turn this knob right on top, see, see what I did there? See, see. Okay, moving on to the next section is a snare and a clap. And it sounds like this. Mm, let me just solo this. So there are actually four tracks in one group track. The first one is a clap. Let me just mute the other. And it's a simple pattern. And if you've noticed, as I said, there are three samples and these all three samples are in a drum rack. If you want to see the session view, the mixer, these are those three claps. And what else I'm doing here is I'm using the low shell on EQ8 to tame the low ends, not to cut them off completely. What I do is I use the shells instead of high pass or low pass to keep the original sound there. See, if you go into the bass, see, I'm not using a low cut. I'll use it only if it's needed. Wait, let me just see. I'm not using the low cut here. I'm using here. I'm using a low shelf. Here also I'm using a low shelf. So this actually helps you keep that warmth, that low end a little bit there. After that, I'm using this rack called 
Haas Rack by Ableton. You can actually go over here and you can actually look for it. Called Haas. Yeah, not okay. Oh, even I made one. I didn't know I made one. Okay, it's there. But I'm using the one made by Ableton. And it actually helps to spread the sound wider. Let me just bypass that effect and play it to you. With the effects on. Wide. Wide. And this. Totally dead. Totally dead. So the next sound is the snare. Let me go into the arrangement view again. And this is the clip pattern. A little bit of a played with the velocity here. And if you hear it with the clap. I'm not doing anything major because the main sound for me is the clap and not the snare. Snare is just behind trying to you know support the other sounds in the rhythm so in the snare track i have done is added a velocity device after that i have an eq trying to cut off the low ends and again tame the high end by using the high shelf and not the high cut right the second thing i'm going to show the next tracks in this section are the snaps yeah, because the original track has that sound. So let me mute these things here and just... This is that snap sound. Okay. And I'm just cutting off a lot of low ends in fact. See, this is where I need to cut off the low ends and not control the low ends. Okay, let me solo you the last clap in this group. And here you see, I'm using the low shelf. Let me put the EQ off. See how you completely not get rid of the lows and you just control it, just push it down or push it up as much as you need. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then all these claps and snares, they go into this group of tracks where I'm side chaining it a little bit with this rack. And I'm trying to control the high end just a little bit, 1 dB down using the channel EQ, the new device of Ableton Live 10. Moving on, then I have these perks. Now these perks, these are wave files. They're not MIDI files. They are wave files. I actually took the loops uh, from some one of the sample library, put them in the simpler, selected the slice mode, and then pitched the samples and then bounced it into the audio track. Now the reason I've done this because this project was actually getting too heavy on the computer and I had no other option but to use the audio files and not the MIDI files. Now let me play you the percussions. And then later I'm using the EQ8 to cut off the low ends, a little bit of mids and the high ends over here. Without the EQ, huge difference with the EQ, right? Then second sample, I've done the same thing again. Put the sample into the simpler, select the slice mode, select the sound that you like, pitch it the way you want it, freeze the track and bounce it to audio. Again, I have an EQ8 here. Remove the EQ without the EQ, the sound sounds like this. With the EQ, it sounds like this. Same with the third percussion track. Without the EQ, a lot of high mids, a lot of disturbing high mids. And this is how it sounds together. All three of them are grouped into a track and this track I'm processing the sound is with a drum bus with a little bit of drive, a little crunch. This dampness is fully up but the main thing is over here, the drive it. I'm using it only 31%. After that I'm using more of EQ8 to tame the sound a little bit more. Without the EQ8 it'll sound like this. No, let me play it to you with the EQ8. Now without the EQ.
with the EQ it sounds way cleaner. Okay, moving on, high perks. So there are five sounds in this group track. The first one is the ride. And this comes in when the vocal actually starts. Let me mute the effects so you can hear this portion clearly. Without the ride, I'm using a simpler for this sample. And I'm using the pitch device to just pitch it up a little. Oh no, 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 I've pitched it down one semitone. And then I'm using the EQ8 to cut off the lows and the mids as much as possible. After that, I have a loop playing, it's a simple, I think it's a vengeance loop. And I've not done anything much in this, but I'm using an EQ8 in this. I'm cutting off all the unwanted frequency from the lows to the high mids. Let's hear it without the EQ8. Now with the EQ8, much better. Now let's hear with the ride and the rest of the drum tracks and the bass. Okay, after that I have another hi-hat sample. And these two devices are not needed, so let me just delete them. In a simpler, I'm using a Vengeance House 3 open hat loop. And this is how it sounds. Right? With the kick and bass, it sounds like this. Adding the claps in. Right? Entire groove sounds like this. Again, over here, I'm using an EQ8. I'm rolling off everything else. I'm cutting off nearly everything, only keeping only the high frequency. After that, I have another loop. So with, with the entire groove, it sounds like this. I am using a utility in this track for a little bit of gain. Then after that, I'm using a frequency shifter here to pitch up the hi-hats so they can sit well in the mix. Let me remove the frequency shifter. Now with the frequency shifter, see, and after that I have an EQ8 just cutting off high mids and pushing a little bit of highs as well. Now let me remove the EQ, let me remove the frequency shifter also. This was actually the loop. Now with them together and now with the entire track. All right, moving on, there's one last hi-hat in the track and it comes when the lead sound repeats itself. So let's check out that sound and that's a simple hi-hat pattern and the MIDI is like this. Going inside the track, what am I doing? I'm using the unwanted devices. Come on, delete it. No wonder your CPU load increases. Okay. Coming back to this simpler device, uh, it's a open hi-hat sample. I have uh, used a fade out on one shot. After that, I'm using the EQ8 to cut off a lot of lows and mids. Without the EQ, it sounds like this. No life, only noise. So furthermore, these, all these tracks, they go into this one group track and I'm processing the sounds furthermore. See, you can see here, I have a drum bus and everything. So let's hear it first with the drum bus. Now without the drum bus, with, after that I have an EQ8. Now over here, I am cutting off the frequency and not using a low shell to control the frequency. And after that, I have this sidechain rack of mine. Moving on to the fills. So the first fill sound is like this. 
this is one fill so I, I think I've taken it from one sample pack and I'm using only this section of it and before that I have another fill so this is how I use fills in my tracks I will not use one sample I will try and merge the other one with it and try and make my own fill here let's hear these fills with the track and I'm not doing any process uh, saying on the first one I'm using the EQ to cut off the low ends and control some high ends which sounds like this without the EQ too sharp and if you hear it with the track it just cuts through and I don't want that alright as I said earlier like the earlier two fills there's the third and the fourth one I layer fills most of the time or I merge them together and make my own this sound in this sound I'm using EQ8 to cut off the low ends and to cut off the high ends and to just push a little bit of highs and then, then I have this sample it has uh, some sort of a synth sound also inside now moving on to the next fill which is the entire fill I've not cut chopped nothing over here with it and I'm using an EQ8 to control a lot of high ends and to cut off a lot of low ends without the EQ it sounds like this with the EQ without with okay Moving on, the last one is a snare roll and this comes just before the drop and it comes only once. So I'm not doing anything in this one. I've used a sample and a simpler in this. I'm using an EQ8 to cut off the low ends and boost low mids a bit. Now we have the FX section. So first one is a crash. Let me just solo it. Simple crash. okay and with the track it's the crash sounds like this before the drop and for this I'm using a sample of a crash and uh, inside the track I'm using an EQ8 to cut off unwanted low ends and to control the high end over here as well moving on I have a reverse crash which comes before the drop it sounds like this so they both together sound like this right and with the track it sounds like this. for the reverse crash I'm using EQ8 again cutting off a lot of highs over here and pushing that sizzle the very top end of the high with the EQ8 now without with the EQ8 big difference and then after that with the crash I have one FX which I've layered with the crash and then on this I have an EQ8 cutting off the low ends a little bit of high ends okay one more track is a reverse sweep and it all they together sound like this okay and with the track it sounds like this okay moving on only one sweep up sound effects let me play you that just a simple sweep with a fade in on the clip and an EQ8 cutting off the low ends controlling the mids and the high mids and cutting off a little bit of the highs without the EQ8 with the EQ8 right 
and the last sound in this section is called the boom so i've made this using the operator and using the pitch bend in the clip so what i've done is i've bounced it in the audio and just added a fade out that's what i've done also in this track i'm using a saturator to add upper harmonics to the bass and after that i'm using eq8 to cut off all those harmonics so it sits well in the mix now without these two if i play you with the track you can't hear it but if i add a saturator so for this section i'm going to close off over here only i hope you enjoyed the video and i'm going to put out the part 2 of the same track next week where i'm going to be showing you the rest of the synths that are there in this track the leads and everything so keep watching for that see you in the next one